Tony Blair is responsible for what is going on with Tommy Robinson. This is a video that looks at the deep issues behind what is going on, because I've always said that Tommy Robinson is the messenger and the allergic reaction to the problem rather than the problem. Hello everyone, this is Andre Walker. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do subscribe, but more importantly, hit the bell notification icon. It's the best way to absolutely guarantee you get all of my videos as soon as they are released. Now, before people start complaining, Tony Blair was not directly responsible for the jailing of Tommy Robinson, but I would argue that he is indirectly responsible. And I want to take you a couple of years back. Do you remember in 1996 when Tony Blair stood up and he talked about the stakeholder society? Well, what he really meant was instead of having a straight up democracy, we would have an almost corporate state. So what would take place is there would be a hybrid of uh, some democratic choice, but principally um, executive agencies with experts from industry would be the people that would run the show. That meant that suddenly our democracy was diminished and we weren't able to do all the things that we wanted to do. So that was point number one, where our democracy started to move away from us and we were no longer able to make decisions over our own lives. Just remember the situation with, say, Darren Grimes, the young man who helped out on the Brexit referendum. The Electoral Commission itself, which was now heavily Romaniac, went in and attempted to destroy his life. He got defeated. Look at an organisation like Natural England. Part of the reason we've got a housing crisis is whenever anybody attempts to build some new houses, uh, the organisation finds some crested newts to protect. And go all the way through Ofcom, the people that have prevented a genuine debate in the British media. There's lists and lists and lists. But the most important thing to understand is that what goes on now in Parliament and what goes on in government is not uh, really the democracy that it used to be. So that's point number one. Point number two, the creation of the Supreme Court. So people are going to say, what on earth has this got to do with anything? Well, what happened under Tony Blair was he moved the Law Lords from Committee Room A of the House of Lords, got rid of the position of Lord Chancellor. And Lord Chancellor had existed, I think, for about 1,500 years in Britain. Really old position. But this idea of a Supreme Court was in order to say that there were some laws which are more important than democracy. Right? OK, so hear me out on this. Point number one. There are executive agencies that can overrule the government. Point number two, there are courts that can overrule the government. Point number three, there are laws that are more important than Parliament itself. Do you see the direction of travel? And the direction of travel was very simply this. Towards a new system where everybody in the world would be treated equally, including on their rights to come to the United Kingdom, where your right to family life would supersede my right to be protected from a terrorist incident, where your right to work in the United Kingdom might, be supersede, might supersede my right to be protected from uncontrolled immigration. And Tony Blair brought all of this in. Now, at the time, we genuinely thought that Blair was a bit of a moderate. He wasn't a big... Um, there wasn't going to be a great deal of change, like a lot of Labour leaders do. He went on about how he was the heir to Thatcher in order to placate us. But of course, we did discover later the damage that was done. And of course, what has happened here is very simply this. The right to family life has meant that Muslim communities all across the UK have been allowed to bring in their first cousins as long as they marry their daughters. So what happens is um, a girl gets the age of 18 at best and then she marries her con cousin in Pakistan or Bangladesh. And because of the European Convention on Human Rights being integrated into British law and because the courts with the Supreme Court have the right to overrule what is going on in government, specifically the Home Office, now our immigration system is completely open. But that's not where Blur and his chums finished because now we have hate crime legislation. This idea that is self-amending, where uh, what they start with is um, you can't be racist, then the definition of racism includes Islamophobia, then the definition of racism includes anti-immigration. I believe that the laws that are already on the statute book will enable us to criminalise opposition to uh, immigration. So at the moment, we can't stop uncontrolled immigration, but I think in future... 
it will be illegal to even oppose it. And that, I think, is going to be a particularly disastrous situation in the United Kingdom and something that we need to stop. Remember the example of the illegal immigrant who ran over a child and the Home Office wanted to deport him, but he argued that his right to family life included his right to, to see his cat on a regular basis and he wouldn't be allowed to take his cat back to his country of origin. And of course, it sounds laughable, doesn't it? But somebody who'd, who'd seriously injured the child was allowed to stay in the United Kingdom on the grounds his cat would be sad if he left. And we've seen that time and time again. And that has created the uncontrolled immigration. But what about Tommy Robinson himself? Well, what we've now brought in in this country is Islamic blasphemy laws. Because remember when hate crime that Blur had come up with, he didn't pass it during his period of office, I don't think. But when hate crime started to turn into Islamophobia, anything that was critical of Islam was now defined as racism and racism therefore was illegal. And so if you want to damage a Quran, you will get into trouble. If you want to insult the local imam, you might get into trouble. That ludicrous situation where somebody put bacon around the handle of uh, the door handle of the entrance of a mosque. Oh, for God's sake, just clean it off. It's kids doing a prank. <gasps> Literally, the security services were down. And what we haven't seen, of course, is a response to what's going on across Europe with the burning of churches. If there were burning of mosques, then there would be a real, real problem. So... I say to you now that when I told you about Tommy Robinson being the allergic reaction to the problem rather than the problem, what I meant was we need systemic change in this country. We can't just, we can't just do what the left does, which is where they think that supporting one or two people is the way forward. And in fact, I don't really support street protests. I'm not really interested in it. We need to take back control of our country. And I have a suggestion. And it's a suggestion that I stole from Dr. David Stark. He's got a brilliant YouTube channel. You should check it out. We need the Great Repeal Act. We need to say that every single piece of legislation that was passed from 1997 until today should be repealed, apart from, say, 10 that we could specify. Get rid of all of this rubbish. Get rid of the 400 new criminal offences that Tony Blair created, the hate crime legislation that bans legitimate debate, the creation of the executive agencies and quangos which have taken our democracy away. All of those things uh, need to disappear because unless they disappear, we will not have a serious political debate in this country because think about the direction of travel since Blair. The direction of travel is simply this. We want to ensure that the governance of this country is not done by democracy. It's done by committee of experts. And by the way, the committee of experts are not experts. They're extremists. Nobody goes on a climate change committee unless they're a nutter for the green agenda. So all decisions are made by executive agencies. Parliament has very limited power. The government... Uh, government departments and government ministers really run only a small percentage of the state. And when anybody's unhappy with the decisions of these executive agencies, we criminalise that free speech and ensure the police lock them up. That is why we need the Great Repeal Bill. And that is why I say that Tony Blair is responsible for what's going on with Tommy Robinson. And I once again repeat to you again, I've said it a thousand times as I drop my phone, that Tommy Robinson is the allergic reaction. I don't need to support him to care about the issues that he raises. Until next time, goodbye.